Good afternoon. I'm Adrian Gilliard here with Sandra Mazan, and we're from the Inclusion Team. And we're bringing you today's episode of Behavior Bites Tidbit. And our tidbit topic for today is the dramatic play area. Last week, we talked about blocks. We talked about the environment and how the environment works to um, affect challenge and behaviors. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about the dramatic play area, which is one of our very, very high traffic areas in our classrooms. And it has so many different benefits, like with children learning conflict resolution, helping children to, you know, be creative in their problem solving skills, alongside a whole lot of other domains that we go into. Absolutely. Social skills, um, it gives them an opportunity to kind of process their world and how they see it and mimic what they what they see, what they hear. Um, independence skills, like social, I mean, there's so much that goes into the dramatic play area. But before we even get into like the benefits of having one, let's talk about like the location. Because last time we started with location of blocks. Mm -hmm. We said blocks was high energy, high, high, you know, activity, really loud. What do you know about dramatic play areas? That it is very high activity. It is very loud. So it should probably be next to the block area. Absolutely. Right. So, I mean, if, if your dramatic play area or housekeeping area, whatever it is that you want to call it, right? But dramatic play sounds just so much more, um, I don't know, because dramatic to me means it could be anything. Anything. And it really can, right? We just have to get creative with it. Um, but yeah, dramatic is a place where everybody wants to go. It's mm -hmm. those two areas, dramatic play, blocks, right? So high traffic area, we're gonna put it where there's a lot of excitement. Um, and if you set it up right, there's going to be a lot of talking, a lot of um, conversation, a lot of great interactions and exchanges. Oh my gosh, like the funniest, the funniest, best, like that is the one area that you can, you can run, run the spectrum of skills mm -hmm. that you want to teach these, these kids. Absolutely. Um, Okay. So what is what does it look like? So we I have a picture of a great looking dramatic play area and how you can set it up. I don't know if you can see this very well. Okay, but so this is what I would consider to be kind of like a model dramatic play area. Mm -hmm. Um you know, the teacher made use of every inch of the wall here. She made every I just use of everything. She made it look homey um, with the plants that she used, the furniture, um, creating a window on the wall um, with, with some little makeshift curtains. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how cute is that? They, a little table, a community table so that when we're socializing, we have a place to sit and eat because that's where we socialize, the kitchen table, right? Um, I love the way that it is all labeled. Mm -hmm. I love the use of the multicultural dolls there, which is super important. You know, we have to have representation for all of our children. Doesn't matter, you know, that's a whole different other topic, but um, everything is labeled. Everything, I would want to go play there. I would want to go play there too. Everything is nice and neat. One thing um, that's important to say is, I know a lot of times our children, they go into these centers and they have a ball and the centers are disheveled and a mess when they finish. But it's important for us to set and reset these centers so that it looks inviting right. for the Absolutely. children to play in. Um, and, and we can talk a little bit more. This picture shows, you know, it gives a great cursory view of what's in the center, but let's go a little bit deeper into the centers and show exactly what is, you know, what's in this center and how it um, kind of relates to all of the developmental domains when we are, um, I think this is the picture. I think this is it. It is. All right, so let's talk about what is in this center. Let's talk about the props. 
Mm. It's all, all the things. about the props. It's all <laughs> about the props. And it's important to add the props slowly. You, you don't have to start off with the, with the housekeeping center that is full of absolutely everything. You don't have to. Because that's when you come into some challenging behaviors where things get thrown, they get, you know, right not not used appropriately because they haven't you haven't had a chance to model how to approach it right and it's all about freshness right right the, the, the more novel something is the more likely they want to play with it right you don't want to play with the same toy over and over again so by adding new things slowly take it just cycle just even if, even if you just you know recycle them like take some out put them in but it's all about the materials and the props that you put in your dramatic play area. Absolutely. And Sandy, like you're saying, keeping everything fresh and new, even if the props that you have in your classroom are getting kind of bored and kind of, you know, the children are bored with them. If you have another classroom in your age group, you can also work with that teacher and swap out toys you know and that way your children have something brand new to them the other students in the other classroom have something brand new to them as well and it's just you know it, it's just something to keep freshness you know absolutely absolutely and so we talk about how the developmental domains are interrelated we want to embed math opportunities into the children's play even in the dramatic play area and you can see that this is done by the clock that the teacher put on the wall the child is you know moving the hands of the clock to different numbers there's also sorting available the cups are sorted by shape the plates are sorted by plates and bowls are sorted by the colors and shapes so and they're measuring spoons there as well. So it's important to embed that into their play. Absolutely. Not only math, though, like literacy. Right. What better place to put all kinds of literacy into um, a, a center, right? Now we're talking literacy. So books. So if it's a housekeeping traditional, maybe we have a cookbook there. Mm -hmm. maybe you have pencil and paper and you have cutouts of I don't know whatever and they make um, a recipe this is how I'm gonna make my spaghetti <laughs> you know what I mean and so um you can go absolutely crazy with the amount of things literature like literacy anything with print on it mm -hmm. um so it could be books it could be menus from your favorite restaurant. Um, it could be, I mean, it's boxes of cereal. Like you can talk about props, bring in things that are familiar. Every kid knows, you know, what Frosted Flakes look like. <laughs> environmental <laughs> print, it's that environmental print again. Environmental print, I mean, um, you can, you can, I mean, go ahead, Adrian. I know you have a million ideas. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, if you look at this picture, you know, seeing a Heinz, a bottle of Heinz ketchup and Welch's grape jelly, you know, these are things that they see at home. So it's important to have these same things bought into the centers and also labeling everything that's in your center, right. um, you know, with photos. So this is not only good for them to be able to see it and recognize it, you know, in the environment, but it's also good for them to know how to clean up where, where things go. Everything has a place and there's a place for everything and they know exactly where it goes. Um, and so when you were embedding that reading and writing opportunity for their play, um, like Sandy was saying before, you can have menus come in and say, or, you know, this is how I'm going to make my spaghetti. These are the ingredients that I'm going to use for my spaghetti. I'll agree to that. Or, or I can pretend to take your order. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Hit what the you clipboard want? and pencils here. Yes, pretend to take their order. So much fun. I mean, okay, so Adrian, can you explain what that is? Open ended props. The open ended props. So I absolutely, my, let me tell you, my favorite toys in housekeeping are those Melissa and Doug wooden fruits and vegetables and all of that that they have to pretend to cut and the Velcro comes apart. Beautiful. I love those. But if you use open-ended props, like this teacher here, she used pom-poms inside of a can of green beans. The child can pretend 
that those pom-poms are anything. They're not limited to them just being green beans. They're not limited to it just being whatever the fruit or the vegetable is that Melissa and Doug has offered through the toy. Um, it can be anything that they want and it lets their imaginations run wild. And what we want to do is we want them to be very imaginative. And so Absolutely. these open-ended problems, even if it's not pom-poms, it could be um, pieces of yarn that you've cut up. Um, it could be pieces of paper that you've cut up into different places, um, pieces, and they can just pretend that it's whatever. So and that's what then, an open is. And then as an involved educator, we go in, right? And you have these open-ended props and we start asking the question, those open-ended yes. questions. What are you making? It smells so good. Ooh, what'd you put in it? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you can increase vocabulary. I mean, again, you can increase vocabulary, expand on, you know, oh, are you the chef? Most three-year-olds have never heard the word chef, but now you never heard do it. it, you know? And so you, forget, that's all fun and good, but now let's talk about behaviors, right? My goodness, what an amazing place to teach pro-social skills. Absolutely. And, you know, it's also another great way to bring that family aspect in as well, because while they are using their open-ended props and they're cooking or making whatever, you can ask them, well, who did you see make that? Who taught you how to make that dish? Um, and, you know, they may talk about different things, you know, that are... Absolutely. Let me just tell you something. I had a student once and his favorite person in the world was his grandpa, Papa. Mm hmm we, he would talk about pop pop all the time. I know all about pop pop because I know about pop pop because me and this student we were like this, right? <laughs> so, um, we're we're talking one day and he's having he's having a moment, and you know I used what I had learned from being interactive, and I just said, you know, I want to pop pop. I wonder if Pop Pop would like a phone call. Do you think you, you think Pop Pop would like a phone call? He was like, I think so. He might be missing him. He might be missing me. I knew that he had missed a weekend because of that rapport, right? Nice. And it kind of clicked. And I was like, you, you think Pop Pop is missing you? And he goes, I think he's very sad because he's missing me. That's dramatic play. That's yeah. pulling it all out. That's what you're doing in these centers. And so now... I have an idea of how I can call Pop Pop or let's make him a picture or what's Pop Pop's favorite, you know, sandwich or what does he love to eat? And so you're not going to have these explosive behaviors. Mm -hmm. And even if you do, let's just say, you know, you have a child and you're really, really actively listening, you can understand what's going on in their lives just by hanging out in dramatic play. Absolutely. They tell you everything. <laughs> so they you know tell you I mean? everything. And you know, and as you're facilitating play and dramatic in the in the dramatic play area, it's also when you're observing and you're facilitating that play, you can see what skills children may need some extra support in. Absolutely. You know, it's it's all it's a it's a way for you to assess, you know, to see what it else you need to do differently in the classroom um, to help bring up certain skills as well like that turn-taking, the sharing. But I mean, because I want people to think about it. These are three, four, and five-year-olds. They're into what they are doing. And so we need to teach them how, like, to turn-take. Did you want a spoon? Is it my turn yet? You know, problem-solving skills, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And then, Adrian, can you just talk about, does it have to always be a kitchen? It does not always have to be a kitchen. The dramatic play area can be whatever it is you want it to be. It can even be an ice cream parlor. And when you make it into an ice cream parlor, you are still embedding those same skills. You're still allowing children to sort with math by color, by size. You can allow the children to help you make ice cream out of cotton balls and food coloring. Um, you can see where they're embedding writing and literacy here the child is you know if they're going to pretend whether or not they're going to be the shopkeeper or they're going to be the customer 
And well, what do you want on your ice cream? Do you want bananas? Do you want peanuts? So much no. fun. So much fun. You know what I'm seeing though? I'm also seeing actual cups from the environment. So exactly. as a teacher, listen, we've got the best job. All you have to say is I teach little students. And they will literally give you things. <laughs> give you these. They will give you things. Um, so great. More, more about um, our role in dramatic play. You know, it's, it's, again, it's those open-ended questions, right? And I kind of want to go back to that because I think that we need to really, really emphasize that. Um, it, it's not the time for um, you to take care of administra administrative things. Um, you know, it, it's the time to get really get to know your children right. and participate. It absolutely is. And this is how you can have, um, when, you, when you're looking at the children's interests, you're seeing what it is that is really, really exciting them. This is how you can guide your curriculum. It doesn't absolutely. just have to be in dramatic play, it can be in other areas. Um, there was a teacher, she decided to make her housekeeping center into a beauty salon. I love that. And she had the, she had the little smocks. She had the little pink magnetic rollers. She had the scissors that only cut paper, not hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had waiting rooms and everything. She had a hooded blow dryer. She had all of these things. And the children were so involved and they, they were so excited about this beauty salon that she initially only meant to have the house being center as a beauty salon for two weeks. She ended up having to keep it that way for two months because they were so into it. And there were always so many different concepts that she was introducing, so many more vocabulary words that she was able to keep introducing Absolutely. because they were showing what their interests were and that's what it is like you need to listen and they will tell you what they're interested in and then you take that and you throw it in another center right you take you take what you hear oh johnny typically you know he's had he has a hard time what did he just say he liked that like oh he's into he's into trucks okay i'm throwing truck books in my block center right and but this is how you get it out of them this is how you get it out of them. It's, it's amazing. And Sandy, you came up with a great idea before. You know, a lot of times our children, they're rushing around and sometimes they're, they're going to the dramatic play area out of turn because it is such a coveted area that they are afraid that they're not going to get a chance to play there. So oh, they're sure. breaking rules and <laughs> just run into the dramatic play area because that's, they want to play there before it's time to go outside. But uh, Sandy, you gave the perfect idea. Who says that you cannot have two dramatic play areas in your room? I mean, but where's the rule? <laughs> where's the rule that says you can't have two dramatic play areas? If your if your classroom has room to allow it, set up two small two small areas for dramatic play, and that way not? it makes sense. Why not? How amazing is that? Like if you think about it. You could have, a, you know, a hospital in one end and a beauty salon in the other. And the other. Absolutely perfect. I love it. Well, dramatic play. Dramatic play. We can sit here and talk about the dramatic play area all day, but we will not. So thank you so much for joining us for our Behavior Bites tidbit topic today of dramatic play. And we will see you next time. See you next week.